Hey guys, welcome back to the office of the F-16C Fighting Falcon. And we're over the deserts of eastern Syria to take a look at the brand new AN-ASQ-213 Harm Targeting System Pod and how you can use it in conjunction with the brand new Mark Point System in the F-16 to get real-time battle damage assessment on any SAM sites you manage to find, pinpoint, and engage with your AGM-88 arms. Now Matt Wagner made a fantastic tutorial on these systems, but my video is going to be a little bit different because I like to set my mark points for my targeting pod on top of the SAM site prior to engaging it with my AGM-88 arm for two distinct reasons. First off, I like to be able to hand off the location of that SAM site to any wingman I might have with me, or to any dissimilar types of aircraft who might be able to engage that SAM site with a different type of weapon than the one I currently have on my aircraft. And second, I like to definitely be able to see the SAM site that I'm engaging with my own eyeballs through the targeting pod to pick up any SAM launches, potentially even before my own raw system picks it up. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this waypoint that's on our HUD. That way we can better simulate being in a persistent DCS world server that might not have any waypoints or flight plans for you to utilize in your aircraft. And show you guys that the HAD page or the harm attack display from your HTS allows you to find, pinpoint, and attack SAM sites without having anything to do with a steer point. Second, we'll go ahead and make sure we're transmitting on link 16 and we'll go to the air-to-ground master mode on our ICP. On our right-hand MFD, we'll bring power to our two AGM-88 arms, and we'll go ahead and swap out the SMIS page for our weapon page. We'll go ahead and change our harm mode to the position mode, and we'll go ahead and leave her in EOM mode for now. We'll come back over to our left-hand MFD, and we'll switch out our Flickus page for our HAD page or harm attack display. We'll go display management switch down to make our left hand MFD our soy, so that way we can move around the HAD pages cursor. We can currently see we've got a search radar out here that's co-located with an SA6 site that we're gonna engage today. We can also see on the HAD page, we've got a white outline showing the maximum range of our harm at our altitude and speed. As we change the harm mode in the position mode, we can see that change. We saw it just shrink in ruck mode or range unknown, pre-brief mode, and back to EOM mode. We can see that as we cycle these, the range between pre-briefed and EOM mode is always the same. So when you're using the harm targeting system, go ahead and always leave it in EOM mode so that way you can have your harm do a sharp right hand or left hand turn if needed to get to the SAM site you're engaging. Next, we'll go ahead and fly a 30 degree offset from the SAM site we're currently flying towards. We'll go ahead and take a look at the HSD by going display management switch right to swap our MFD pages. And we'll go ahead and come about 30 degrees to the left hand side. Using the new cardinal direction markers on the HSD, it's very easy to go ahead and find a heading of 360 or due north, which should give us a nice little 30 degree offset from our SA-6 site. I always like to go ahead and offset to the left hand side of the SAM site due to the fact that our lightning targeting pod lives on the right hand chin station of our F-16. And if we offset to the right hand side of the target, we're in danger of potentially masking our targeting pod. If you have some airspace considerations or restrictions, any pop up ground threats or potentially even interceptors coming out to get you before you can engage the SAM site, definitely feel free to offset to the right hand side of the SAM site you're engaging, but just know that you may be in danger of actually masking your lightning pod when you want to see that SAM site most. All right, at this point, let's go ahead and pause the simulation and talk about how the HTS pod actually works. Looking at the F-10 map and using our ruler tool, we can see that we're currently flying at a heading of roughly about 360 degrees or due north, which gives us a kind of a pretty darn nice 30 degree offset from our SAM site over here, 
that is located with some other units at Palmyra Airfield. We can see the SA-6 site right here with an SA-6 search and track radar along with a P-19 search radar. So as we're currently flying, the 360 heading over here offset pretty good ways away from our SAM site. The harm targeting system is trying to triangulate the point of the SAM site by looking at the azimuth of the SAM site constantly as we're flying on this heading and taking new lines of measurement from our own ship out towards the SAM site and trying to find where those lines of azimuth actually intersect. And as you get more and more lines of azimuth, the farther you fly offset away from the SAM site, your harm targeting system pod is going to develop a clearer and clearer and more and more accurate picture of where that SAM site is actually located. However, it may not be perfectly accurate when you actually look at the SAM site with your targeting pod using the SPI or sensor point of interest that is set by the harm targeting system pod due to the fact that it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. You just have to be in the ballpark, kind of like a horseshoes or hand grenades kind of situation, because once your harm gets close enough to the SAM site in question, it's just gonna take over on its own and use its own secret head to guide itself right into the threat emitter you want it to go after. So this is why I also like to set my mark points first before engaging the site with my harm, due to the fact that it could be a little bit more accurate, a little bit easier with manually moving around the pod rather than relying on the harm targeting system itself. But believe me, it can get pretty darn accurate. So let's go ahead and hop back to the cockpit and get started. All right. So we're flying on this current offset heading and we'll go ahead and put our cursor switch over the top of our search radar. So let's go ahead and pause the simulation one more time and talk about these different numbers that are over the top of our HAD page display. So on our HAD page, we have the azimuth from our own ship to the SAM site itself, about 032 degrees, which looking at our current heading and then looking at the HSD page, that would actually all line up uh, more or less, doesn't have to be perfect like we just explained. And then we've got 17 nautical miles, 1.4 nautical miles, and PGM-5. So let's talk about these two numbers, because these two numbers right here can be rather confusing. So going back to our F-10 map, what the 17 nautical miles refers to is the error in distance away from the uh, actual location of the SAM site. So we can see here very easily that it is definitely not the distance from our own ship to the SAM site itself, because that's like 37, 38-ish nautical miles. But what it's referring to actually is the error in distance away from the SAM site. So it could be 17 nautical miles this way, or it could be 17 nautical miles this way. And it all depends off of what the error is actually giving you. If we look back in the cockpit and we look at the second number of 1.4 nautical miles, that's the error in the azimuth of the SAM site itself. So looking at the F-10 picture again, it could be that the SAM site is 1.4 nautical miles this way, or it could be 1.4 nautical miles this way. As we fly further and further along on our offset heading here, those numbers should get smaller and smaller and smaller, showing us that the error is getting less and less and less. This is because, as we explained earlier, our HTS pod is getting more and more azimuths to compare the intersect point to show where the harm, uh, the SAM site that is, actually resides. So with that in mind, let's go ahead, unpause the simulation once again, and let's open up our TGP on our, on our right hand MFD. We'll go ahead and throw it into white hot mode and into snowplow mode. And as you guys can see, it's very hard to see anything in this picture at the moment. That's because as of this recent open beta update for the F-16, you're always going to need to be playing with the brightness and contrast of your TGP. 
This is due to the fact that your brightness and contrast factors will change as the different focus of the pods, you look at different points on the ground, different weather phenomenon is going to force you to have to play with the picture to get the best possible view of the target or the area that you're looking at. So let's go ahead and take a look at what our numbers are now as we get further and further along on our offset heading. And we can see it's definitely getting a little bit better. And finally, we come to this last number on the top row of our HAD display, where it says PGM, or this is for the precision factor, currently at PGM2, which is pretty darn good. And that is for the search radar. So that's pretty darn close, they're co-located. So let's go ahead and go TMS forward to hand it off to our harm and also create a speed. This is then going to take our targeting pod and point our targeting pod as close to where the SPI can find to the actual SAM site itself. So this is going to allow us to basically see where the HTS pod thinks the SAM site is, which if we look here, we can see the SAM site is right here by these little faint dots on the display. And that's pretty darn close. For a harm shot, that's gonna be plenty of precision to allow that harm to guide itself with its own sensor right into the SA-6 tracking radar, no problem. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and set a mark point right here. We're going to break the handoff to our harm, move the targeting pod over the top of the tracking radar for the SA-6, set a second mark point so that way we can have a very precise point to put our targeting pod when we fire our harm. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll go ahead and unpause the simulation. We'll go DMS down to make our targeting pod the soy. We'll press mark. We'll go TMS forward. We'll go DMS down again. We'll go target management switch aft to deselect the SA-6 tracking radar. We'll go DMS down again to make our targeting pod our soy. We'll click on return, steer point to six, enter. And then we'll start to move our targeting pod with our throttle designator controller over onto our SAM site here. And we can now see our SA-6 tracking radar. We'll go TMS forward to do a point track. We'll go return, mark, TGP is set as our soy for creating the mark point. TMS forward to create mark point 27. Return. Then we'll go back to our HAD display. Display management switch aft. And we'll go ahead and set the SA6 as our target of interest. We'll go back to our weapon display. We can currently see on our harm display page that we have an SA-6 set for station 3 and we are ready to engage that SA-6 and then very very easily swap our targeting pod back over to mark point 27 to get a very good picture of the SA-6 tracking radar. So at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my right hand MFD I'm going to switch it back over to my HSD to see the threat ring of the SA-6 that's down there and make sure that we don't get deep inside of its envelope as we engage it with our arm. We'll go ahead and push up into Afterburn, HSD page. You can say we're pretty far offset at this point. We'll go ahead and kick the autopilot off. Go ahead and roll out. We'll fire the harm. It's on its way. Steer point 27, enter targeting pod. And there we go. Our targeting pod is right on top of our SA-6 site. out. 
We just went into the threat ring of the SA-6, then we went right back out of it and caused the SA-6 to drop its lock. You can see our harm is definitely doing its best going out there. And it looks like we're probably going to get a hit. Altitude hold mode back on. And shack. Let's take a look. Based off of what we're seeing here, it looks like that SA-6 is still on the air. So that's giving us real time, right away, good to go, battle damage assessment through our targeting pod. So it looks like we're gonna have to fire a second harm at that SAM site. So this is why we have the targeting pod right on top of it, ready to go. If we look at the F-10 map and we take a look, eh, it looks like the SA-6 is still alive but it's probably mission killed at this point. The way that the damage model of ground vehicles in DCS works is that basically if the health bar goes below a certain point, it's mission killed, and we can see that the harm targeting system has updated it, and we now have a green six that says the SA-6 is off of the air. So unfortunately, we're not able to have any kind of, you know, easily seen way to tell if that SA-6 radar is really damaged or not by the damage model that's in DCS at the moment. However, the harm targeting system does show that the SA-6 is now off the air and we only have a search radar on our raw equipment. So I hope this video helps you guys out with the simple yet complex procedure of using the new harm targeting system along with the new mark point system in the F-16 as of the latest open beta update. As always, please give us a like and a subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Please fly safe out there and stay healthy.